Blood sugars were the only means to diagnose diabetes for many years. More recently, an additional option has been added to the diagnostic criteria, the hemoglobin A1C or glycated hemoglobin. What exactly is the hemoglobin A1C? Red blood cells are permeable to glucose, which passes into the cells where it modifies hemoglobin. Once modified, the hemoglobin remains this way until the red cell turns over, usually about 120 days. The higher the glucose levels, the more hemoglobin gets modified. Thus, hyperglycemia leads to a higher percentage of hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is a measure of your average blood sugar over the prior three months, which can give information about both fasting and post-meal blood sugars. It's a simple blood draw that can be done at any time of day and does not require fasting, so may be a more convenient means of detecting high blood sugars than the two-hour glucose tolerance test or a fasting blood sugar. Numerous observational studies have shown that A1C levels correlate with diabetes complications. And similar to the blood glucose value cutoffs for the diagnosis of diabetes, a cutoff of 6.5%, the point where diabetes complications start to increase, is the diagnostic cutoff when using A1C for the diagnosis of diabetes. There are some issues with the hemoglobin A1C, however, which have caused some people to question whether the lab is an appropriate tool for diagnosing diabetes. A1C correlates roughly with average glucose, with an A1C of 7%, approximately equal to a blood sugar of 150 milligrams per deciliter. But this is just an estimate. The average blood sugar associated with an A1C of 7% can range from 120 to 185, while an A1C of 8% can range from 150 to 220. So two patients with the same average blood sugar, say, 160 milligrams per deciliter could have A1C values that differ by 1%. Similarly, a patient with an average blood sugar of 180 can have an A1C of 7%, while a patient with better blood sugar control, an average of 150, can actually have a higher A1C. A1C has other limitations as well. The A1C measurement assumes a normal red blood cell lifespan of three to four months, about 120 days. So anything that shortens the red blood cell lifespan, such as hemolytic anemia, blood loss, or pregnancy, would cause A1C to be artificially low, since there is less time for the red blood cell to be exposed to the high levels of glucose. In cases where there is slower red blood cell turnover, the red blood cells are around longer, so have more exposure to the high glucose levels, resulting in an artificially high A1C. Slower red blood cell turnover occurs with iron deficiency anemia, folate, and B12 deficiency. So checking a complete blood count for evidence of anemia can be helpful in determining the accuracy of the A1C. In addition to the above noted limitations, epidemiologic studies have shown that for patients with the same average blood sugars, African American patients will have a higher A1C value. This is independent of glucose tolerance or glycemic control. So if we use the A1C for diagnosis of diabetes, we may be over-diagnosing diabetes in these populations. This may not accurately reflect their true risk of diabetes complications, and this requires more study. A1C is easy to obtain and cheaper than the oral glucose tolerance test, which makes it a good option for screening populations at risk for developing diabetes. However, you do need to be aware of the limitations and consider alternative screening tests for patients with abnormal red blood cell turnover and consider a second test, either a fasting blood sugar or oral glucose tolerance test to confirm your diagnosis.